with summer beginning today at 6.34 p.m. We are joined by the so-called <laughs> queen of the summer beach novel. Her name is Ellen Hildebrand. She has written 17 of them taking readers to the sandy shores of Nantucket. I think she likes Nantucket. Her latest novel, Here's to Us, forces three ex-wives and rivals to come back to the island after unexpected death. Ellen, welcome back to the table. Thank you. It's for always, me. always yes. good to see you. So I'm sitting here wearing my ex-wife hat. It's on backwards. And I'm wondering, why did you think that this would be rich territory, ex-wives coming together? Well, I've often written about women's friendship. Uh -huh. and, and in the rumor last year was about a friendship between two women. And so what I wanted to do this year was give it a twist. So I thought to myself, who really despises each other? Uh -huh. Ex-wives <laughs> of the same man. And so there, that was basically my novel. Yeah, they normally don't tend to get along. <laughs> exactly. And you had three different ones with three very different personalities, which I also thought was very interesting. Right, so that was the case. So my, my, my husband, my ex-husband is, meaning the ex-husband in my novel yes. is Deacon Thorpe. He's a celebrity chef. And he has three ex-wives. He dies in chapter one and leaves his beloved Nantucket home to the three of them. Why he thought that was a good idea, I don't know. Yeah. So the three ex-wives, with each with a child by him, descend on the house for a weekend. And that it, is essentially the basis. It's a high school sweetheart. His a, high school sweetheart. A movie sweetheart. star. That's right. And then the nanny. That's right. So you have yeah. the high school sweetheart, very <laughs> yeah. likable, yeah. sort of the diva, the, the very um, high maintenance actress and then he then marries their nanny yes. so it's yeah we've got a lot of drama going on yeah. you also included <laughs> cooking recipes in the book this time i did because he's a chef that gave me an opportunity to put four recipes in the book um the first two are by a food blogger that i follow named jessica merchant mm -hmm. and she wrote those recipes specifically for my novel. Mm. The second two are by Sarah Chase, who's a longtime Nantucket food writer, and she also read the novel and then added two recipes. And so they're real, you can use them, they're delicious. Yeah, I just know it says the recipes are in the book. I thought if I could cook that champagne cake sounds oh, really good. Doesn't it sound magnificent? Yeah. Uh, I can't help but feel like <laughs> Diane Fossey here just a bit. Like just sit here <laughs> quietly and they'll accept you. Uh, but Nantucket, <laughs> it, it is your home. You write beautifully about it, it's a character. Absolutely. What is it that speaks to you, speaks to the I've, writer? In I've you? been there 23 years. Um, I lived in New York City, like you guys do, on the Upper East Side, and I came for the summer, and I can remember my ferry pulling into the harbor and seeing the church steeples and the gray shingled buildings and thinking, I am never leaving. Yeah. And I did come back. I was teaching at that point, came back, taught the school year, and then moved to Nantucket permanently in 1994. And it's perfect for a writer. It shuts perfect, you in in the winter. Perfect for a writer. Very quiet and contemplative in the winter. And then in the summer, there's enough going on that it gives you the material for the novels <laughs> that you need to write. But you don't just write in summer, though. You no. sort of write all year long. That's right. Year I, I am on a double. I write uh, a winter book, a Christmas book, and a summer book. So I'm on double deadline. I write. I can write anywhere. And as you can see in the pictures, I write longhand in notebooks. I know. Yes, yeah, on yellow pages like on this. On yellow pages like Gail's pages. But you know what I thought was interesting is when you were here two years ago, it was a day before you were having a double mastectomy. Mm -hmm. I still marvel that you came to us, Ellen, because I think I would have been home looking at my boobs one last time. Absolutely. Just to see before it happened. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you marvel that you were able to come here and sit at the table and talk coherently? I do. I looked at the clips of both years I've been in, and when I see myself in the two years ago in that clip, I think, how did I do that yes. um, but at the time the good thing is I didn't know what was coming down the road so I had I had no fear essentially and I really wanted to go and talk about it uh -huh. um, but I'm happy to say two years later you know cancer has given me a couple of gifts yeah well, you four look gifts good. if yes. you include the, the yeah. new breasts um, yeah, it looks it, good you look good <laughs> it's given me a real enthusiasm for renewed enthusiasm for life yeah. and it's given me a desire to reach out and that's Talk great. to other women. That's great. We just showed we just showed that picture too, where when right before your daughter came up with that hashtag Mama, Mama Strong, Strong, which I love right. that so much. Yes. Yes. How old was she? She was a little she was girl. eight. Yeah, a little girl. Yes, now she's sophisticated ten. So. Did, did you write your way through that to a degree? A, I did. As well? I did. One of the things that kept me going was the normalcy of being on a deadline mm -hmm. and not being able to curl up in a fetal ball like we yeah. talked about. You had to yeah. keep going. And so when women come to me, there's a section of my website now called hashtag Mama Strong. And you can write in, and if you write a story about your cancer, um, my publisher sends a box of my books to your oh. cancer treatment center. And so I've been um, in contact with women who've read my novels while they were sitting in the chemo I, chair. I love that you do that. I love that moment between you and Jason in the green room because it really was something where he goes, is this you? <laughs> so what happens when you're out on the beach or you're traveling and you see people reading your book? 
Uh, it happens. Does that all, happen to you a lot? It happens to me a lot, especially on Nantucket. But I've been, I was in Anguilla in November and I saw a woman reading my book and I thought, should I go up to her? And I actually yes. do have a moment of hesitation. Like, does she want to talk to me? Um, or but I, how is that book? I was thinking about reading it. <laughs> Did you go up to her? I do. And she said, I saw you staring at me. I wasn't sure what you wanted. And I said, oh, I'm Ellen Hildebrand. And then, you know, oh, they freaked nice. out. That's great. Really Ellen Hildebrand, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Here's to us on sale now.